Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create your first pipeline or a simple pipeline in Data Factory. I'm very excited for this video. I hope you are too. As you can see, we're starting off in Excel. I'm just going to be showing here the data we're going to be loading in. So all I'm going to be simply doing is I've got this saved as a CSV file, three columns, first name, last name and date of birth, three rows of data and all we're going to be simply doing is uploading this data into Data Lake Storage and then we're going to be using Data Factory to copy that data into an Azure SQL database. Let's head over to the Azure portal and get started. So I'm now logged into the Azure portal and the first thing we're going to be doing is creating a data factory instance. There's a couple of ways we can we can do that. Uh, we can click on what I believe is called uh, a hamburger icon here and click on create a resource or on my home page here I've got this big create a resource button. So I'm going to click on create a resource. I'm going to click uh, I'm just going to search for data factory to make it as simple as possible and to find data factory and then I'm going to click on create that's going to load our page for configuring this instance of data factory I'm going to set my subscription I am going to be creating a new resource group this is going to be called data factory tutorials I'm going to set the name of the data factory and for simplicity I'm just going to call it data factory bearded dev 220516 uh, I'm going to set that in the location of UK South um, so we've got our name there a unique name uh, probably not the best naming convention but as you see I'm just moving through uh, and naming resources uh, whatever the resources name BD for bearded dev and then the date uh, just helps me uh, create those unique names when you're setting this up within your organization you'll have naming standards and, and things like that to, to set uh, moving on to the git configuration page we're not going to be using git today we're just keeping this as simple as possible networking uh, so again we're not going to be looking at managed virtual networks I'm just going to connect via a public endpoint move on to the advanced tab but we're not going to be doing anything with customer managed keys uh, no need to set any tags at this stage um, we'll go on to review and create we've passed the validation and we're going to click on create so that's going to start our deployment and while that's running I'm just going to go home and I'm going to kick off another resource that in fact has already succeeded so next we're going to create a storage account I'll just click on create a resource storage account a bit more configuration here again I'm going to be setting that under the same resource group under my bearded dev subscription again like I said I'll, I'll just follow similar naming standards that's a bit too long ah, there we go uh, and set all resources into the same location um, which is UK South for me I'm not going to worry about performance or redundancy at this stage uh, move on to advanced we're going to set this up as data lake storage gen 2 so we're going to click the hierarchical namespace button uh, there's nothing else we need to set on there and don't worry if I'm moving quickly through these it's just because this is a, a data factory video but I will do separate videos on setting up these resources onto networking again we want to enable public access uh, don't need to do anything special with routing or data protection that's just setting our policies about deletes and restores and things like that 
encryption, just going to use the defaults. Again, no tags, uh, just check the validation and create. Um, while that's kicking off, we will start creating another res resource, which is going to be our SQL database. So again, create a resource, SQL database, I'm going to be setting the save subscription and resource group. Uh, I have got a video coming up this week on uh, resource groups as well, so keep an eye out for that to get a better understanding of how resource groups work in Azure. Uh, we'll stick to the same naming standard and create a new logical server. And again, that's just going to follow this standard um, convention I've set for ease. Uh, we'll set that up in the location we're using. Uh, and then we just need to enter some server admin details. Just type in a password. Okay, so there's our server all configured. Uh, let's just make sure we're not using anything expensive. Um, so yeah, we just want vCore general purpose, uh, two vCores. That data max size is probably too big for what we're looking for at the moment, um, but it's okay. We're going to drop these resources. It's not something we're going to retain. Um, just locally back up. For now, networking, um, and set that to public endpoint. We're going to allow Azure services and resources to access this server. So we're going to allow traffic from Microsoft Azure IP addresses. And that's what Data Factory will be accessing under. But again, we'll, I'll do further videos on that. And I'm going to add my client IP address so I can actually access the database. Connection policy is fine at default. That will manage that for us. Uh, we'll turn off Defender. Nothing else we need to set on there. Uh, we're not starting off with uh, any data. Moving on to the tags page, nothing there again. We'll just check the validation. Uh, if you are following along with this video, um, and I will put the comma separated list of the file I'm using in the description. It is just a small amount of data though that I've just made up, um, I'm sure you can make something up yourself to to follow along with this um, but it is available in the description and obviously as we're on Azure we are on a pay-as-you-go model so there will be a cost but you can set up a, a free subscription that will give you certain resources um, available to use so let's go ahead and create this I've, I've got the monthly cost there but I'm not too concerned because the the lifetime of this SQL database is going to be this video. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and click create. That's going to take uh, a few minutes to run. That's probably the resource that takes the longest. Uh, and while that's happening, we will have a look at our resource group. So we should have our storage account and our data factory instance v2 sitting there uh, wouldn't recommend using v1 it's going to be deprecated shortly um, so let's move on to our storage account so in this video as well we're not going to be going through setting connections from to be able to pull files from on-premise my local network into Azure I'm just going to be manually uploading it uh, so I'm going to jump into the data lake I'm going to set up a new container uh, typically follow the naming convention of ingest for files going in um, open the container and I'm simply just going to upload this file okay upload Given the uh, size of the file, that shouldn't take long at all. Uh, jumping back to 
the resource group I can see here uh, deployment of uh, SQL database is still actually running at the moment so I'm just going to wait for that to complete and then we'll continue in fact, while that's doing that let's have a look in data factory I'm going to click on data factory and then I'm going to open Azure data factory studio this loads nicely in a new tab so it's easy to navigate between other resources and build pipelines in data factory so I'm going to click on the pencil icon author uh, and that's going to open up our workspace where we can create pipelines data sets and the new additions to the data factory family uh, data flows which I'll definitely be doing some videos on and power query if you're familiar with power query through usage through Excel or power BI uh, we can create those uh, same kinds of queries through those steps within data factory so that's a uh, that's the latest addition and again we'll I'll be doing some videos on that in the future I'll just check oh, that's been created that's succeeded so I can have a look in the resource group now I can see there we've got our data factory our storage account our logical SQL server and our SQL database so before we start on creating our pipelines what we need to do is set up some link services which are going to be connections to our resources so if we click on our manage icon you can see here our connections link services we're going to be creating a link service and the first one I want to look at is Azure SQL database but you can see on here the amount of different resources or services that you can actually connect to um, and it's not just services on Azure either because obviously we can have connections to on-premise the web um, lots of different uh, other cloud platforms uh, different software as a service tools as well um, so it's got a large amount of connectors and new ones are being added all the time uh, in this case though we're keeping it straightforward sticking within Azure so I'm going to choose Azure SQL database uh, I'm going to just give that a name of an Azure SQL database integration runtimes again we'll cover that in the future and integration with Key Vault so we're going to select our subscription set it under bearded dev and see our server we can see our database uh, but we have ran into a bit of a problem here uh, luckily I've done this on purpose so at the moment we don't have a way for data factory to authenticate uh, against the database so I'm going to jump over to SQL Server Management Studio and just quickly set that up within this video okay I'm in SQL Server Management Studio now can connect in other ways um, and I'm just going to connect to the database to set up data factory as a user again there are different authentication methods that we can use for data factory such as managed identities that we'll cover in other videos uh, now there's a number of scripts I need to run um, luckily I have those saved in a trusty notepad file so I'll just copy those across and I'll talk you through those so the first thing we need to do is create a login for data factory we're creating it using SQL authentication just for speed at the moment um, so I just need to run that to the master database create a login for data factory uh, switch back to our database I'm going to create a user I'm going to add that user to a role now this is very bad practice to add data factory to the DB owner role but again I'm just doing that for 
for speed at the moment typically uh, it would be data writer and data reader that data factory would need access to um, and possibly uh, a new role created with execute permissions um, so we've got the access now set up so I can put in the username I've created data factory and test myself here creating the password and then I can actually test that connection uh, so I can see the connection successful so I've enabled data factory access but what I also want to do um, is create the target table so this is going to be the landing zone if you like for for that file we looked at earlier so I'm just going to create that table and as you can see I'm, I am using strings or varchers just for ease as well um, and if we have a look in that table we've got we've got nothing there at the moment we'll come and have a look at that after we've set up and ran our pipeline okay so we'll create our link service for SQL database uh, and we only need to do this once so you'd only have one link service for the database just sharing data it's just how data factory connects and authenticates against each resource um, so if I'm going to add a lot more tables to this in the future I still have one link service I might have many data sets under that that we'll get onto shortly but just one link service so you'll see we don't tend to create a huge amount of link services but it will depend on what sort of what you what you need to connect to and consume and pull data from uh, I'm just going to create a new link service for Azure Data Lake Storage so I've just found the type um, now we're going to use the account key so it's going to pick up the account key so there's not much we need to do uh, in terms of authentication here we just need to set the subscription and the storage account just test it to make sure everything's working okay and then create that link service so we've now got our connection set up so data factory can connect to our data lake and our database so let's move on now to the author page uh, and the next steps we need to take are creating data sets so I'm going to come over here to data sets that's going to turn into data set actions the three dots there that I'm going to click on and I'm going to create a new data set the data sets are under One, the link two, services Three. So I'm going to first of all find Azure SQL database just over here and as I've selected that as the data store type I'll then select my link service from the list and notice that we've got two link services but only the database link service shows because that's what type I selected uh, and we're going to give this a name I'll just call it table customers um, and then data factory is connecting to the database pulling some metadata back at this point to get our tables um, we're going to go for our customers table and it's going to import the schema there for us as well which is very nice so if we click on OK there's our data set and we can see there's our connection we're connecting through that link service to this table our schema so it's brought in that schema that we created automatically for us uh, and then we're going to go ahead and quickly create another data set which is just going to be based on data lake storage gen 2 uh, I've got it saved as a CSV file at the moment well yeah it is a CSV file we'll just call this file customers and again we'll only be able to select the relevant link service to the type of data set so in this case data lake storage uh, and then we can browse to that specific file so it's within the ingest folder select the customers CSV OK again it's going to pick up the schema um, we know that the first row is header as a header in that file um, even if we didn't tick, tick that though at that opportunity if we click OK we'll see we have um, I'll just minimize the factory sorry just collapse the 
properties actually so that's a bit clearer um, so we can see here we've got a number of options to set so working with CSVs we can add different delimiters different escape characters and then we can set the first row as header tick there or not and if we have a look at our schema you can see that's been imported and there's actually a preview data button here so we can actually look straight within that file uh, I think that well that is definitely limited uh, I'm not sure of the amount of rows it's set I think it's actually quite low maybe a hundred or less but feel free to correct me in the comments um, we can also do exactly the same in the, the database as well but we don't actually have any data in there because that's where we're moving the data to so the close button just went off screen there you can you can sometimes have issues like that on the Azure portal I've seen it on um, browsers sometimes where things don't quite align uh, I'm working on a sort of 14 inch laptop screen at the moment and it's uh, sometimes things can get hidden in the Azure portal which doesn't happen when I'm working on a 27 inch monitor uh, to create those I'm just going to validate just make sure there's no errors uh, and then I'm going to publish those changes um, so it's just publishing to what we're working in at the moment uh, once we do videos in the future on uh, uh, git and devops integration uh, it might make a bit more sense but anything we change we just have to click publish um, and it's just publishing in exactly the same place um, so we're finally there where we're going to create a, a pipeline apologies it's been so long to to set this up I just wanted to give you um, a bit of a feel and for you to start asking questions about using data factory um, and hopefully for you to see how how simple it is so we're going to go into pipelines now I'm going to create a new pipeline I'm just going to amend the name I call this pipeline customers and we'll just hide the properties now uh, I'll also move this across so these are all the activities that we can perform within a pipeline so commonly used copy data just move data from one place to another sorry not move um, but just take a copy of that data to another place so we're not deleting it from the from the source we can um, but not within the copy data activity we need another uh, activity for that uh, data flow similar to integration services data flows if you've ever worked with those so I look forward to uploading some videos on those uh, different things here so we can run Databricks notebooks data lake analytics which I guess didn't really take off uh, a massive amount um, there's custom things we can call as your functions um, there's control logic for running pipelines and we do have the concepts of parent child pipelines as well um, so we can run delete operations we can work with variables we can execute stored procedures um, wait activities uh, so control logic uh, apply filtering for each switches uh, different things like that run uh, run a power query uh, call machine learning models um, lots of different things we can do but to start off with we're just going to perform the copy activity I'm just going to edit this to copy customers and all we simply need to do it's quite straightforward now we've got our link services and our data set set up is we're going to set our source to our customers file uh, and again we can preview the data at this point and then we're going to set our sync so our target as table customers uh, and there's a few different activities we can do on um, because it's a database base so there's different different things we can actually configure uh, and then we can set the mapping 
um, and data factory is very good if we simply click on import schemas well I say it's very good it's very good when the names match uh, in this case slight difference in uh, lowercase ends and uppercase ends over here but if the schemas are set up exactly the same uh, it's quite straightforward if not we might need to do some configuration of the mapping and we'll we'll have a look in that in the future as well um, so I think we're ready to go uh, so we'll publish our pipeline first of all we will validate no errors great there shouldn't be it's quite a straightforward pipeline if we publish that now so just adding the changes to the data factory uh, and once that's complete uh, we should be ready to trigger that uh, again we'll just jump over to SQL Server Management Studio and I'll show you the uh, the table just run this query again seeing that no rows of data in there let's go back and run the pipeline so I'm going to click up here to add a trigger I'm going to trigger now so triggers are something we can configure on a scheduled basis or event based um, perhaps we could have a container set up within data lake storage and we're waiting to receive files and that can actually be an event based trigger to kick off a pipeline as soon as that file arrives um, data factory can be periodically checking for that well the trigger certainly can be checking for that and it will start the pipeline uh, there's no parameters to configure again straightforward we'll click on OK uh, it's going to come up and message running we're going to click on view pipeline it's going to take us to the monitor page uh, again it's quite squashed because my laptop screen size it's currently in a state of queued click on refresh and it's completed I wouldn't have expected it to take uh, let's just expand this up a bit and we can click on the details a sunglasses icon have a look at that you can see it's moved data rows read three from data lake storage rows written three to Azure SQL database succeeded no problems at all very short amount of time very small amount of rows not going to be we're not going to be testing performance of a of data factory copy activities with that many rows definitely not uh, let's jump over to SQL Server Management Studio and query the table run the query again and as we can see the data has now arrived really hope you have enjoyed that video if you can um, get yourself onto the Azure portal and try and create your own basic pipelines uh, this is uh, a section or a category I'm really excited to bring you videos on so keep a lookout for more coming soon if you haven't subscribed to the channel feel free to do so if you have enjoyed the video please hit the like button uh, any questions or any videos you'd like to see in the future please let me know in the comments thanks a lot for watching